Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. It's good to see you again. So this time we're gonna take some roller chain and we're gonna make some Damascus. Okay guys, so Thomas and Kevin sent me this roller chain. We're gonna configure this about like that. We're gonna take a few links, weld them together, put a handle on it, and uh, get into the forge. Okay guys, here we go. I'm gonna grab this chain and we got a few links marked out here. We grabbed actually an extra link, more than what I thought I was gonna do. Um, just cause I can fit it in the forge, I wanna see what happens. So I'm using this uh, miter saw, it's actually a wood cutting miter saw, and I use it as an abrasive saw. Why? It's got a um, pretty good little motor on it. it um, I don't really like abrasive saws to begin with, so I didn't wanna go out and buy one. I found this at a yard sale, literally for $5. Uh, if it breaks, if it burns up, it doesn't really matter to me. And uh, it works. So save the money and, you know, find an alternative. Yeah, for me, most tools can be used for more than their intended purpose. And if it's going to save me some money and let me, you know, move forward in other areas in the little shop, it's what I'm going to do. So that's why I do those things. So you're going to get a little Q&A while we're putting this thing together. Anyway, what we're doing is just tacking the links together to get this thing rigid so we can weld a handle on the end of it. And I had a little bit of a thing going here. I wasn't really sure if I should do some, you know, substantial full welds around these things and, you know, like one inch welds to keep this thing good and tight together or if I should just tack it. I didn't want too much MIG weld inclusion in this thing, but on the other hand, I wanted to make sure it was going to stay together and that, you know, it was one of those things. It's just going to be part of the experiment to see what we need to do to make this thing work out. So if it doesn't work out this time, we're going to definitely do this again. We got plenty of this chain and uh, I think it's going to make some cool patterns and, and it's just a lot of fun to do. So. so our first question is, how much do you weld this to hold it together while you're trying to get it? forge welded together and that's something we'll pay close attention to here as we move forward there we go we are welded up pretty good it's pretty rigid and uh, we're gonna go ahead and and I didn't put this on film but we're gonna go ahead and put it in a little bit of alcohol and then uh, get some flux on it while it's cold we want to give ourselves the best chance we can. And I cleaned it up with a little bit of brake clean to get the grease and oil off of it before I did that. Just like I did with the last motorcycle chain Damascus video I did. If you haven't checked that one out, check it out. There's a lot more information in it. This one's more of an experimental thing than anything, so we skipped some of those steps of filming. So we had to take the top die out because it was just too thick and it wouldn't fit. So we're just using the top ram and uh, the bottom die and I start forging it from the side and it was forging up okay that way but this ended up being a little bit of a failure only because I wasn't paying attention to forging it the links down on themselves from the edge which is typically what you do with motorcycle chain Damascus or at least I do and that's how I get it to work. My second mistake was using this die. It started rocking the links back and forth pretty badly and it just sort of ripped any weld that I had apart that was in there. So I got rid of the bottom die, went back to forge welding it, and I could tell by this time that there were some areas that just weren't taking. But there were quite a few areas that were. And I wanted to keep going with it to get you know, even if I ended up with a piece out of this thing, it'll be fine. At least it wouldn't be, you know, wasted time and effort. I would get something out of it. So, uh, I just kept going. Put the squaring dies in there. Kind of uh, pinched those uh, links together at the top and the bottom and got them more inclusive into the welds. And when I felt like it was together about as much as it possibly could be. And I could still see areas moving and cooling off a little quicker than other areas. So I knew that there were areas that were not welded together. And I think that all started with my approach at the beginning, forging it from the side. So we put it under the dies to see what it would do. 
squish it down good and flat see if we get a long bar or what and it started sort of splaying open on both ends and it ended up with some cracks and some of the links were separated but the one thing I could tell from it is where the rollers were it welded together really nicely so here's what it came out looking like we let it cool off and then what I did is I took it over to the abrasive saw again and I cut between the little links to get it into pieces so these are actually the rollers and between where the links didn't quite let the rollers come together and weld there are some pretty good welds in here there's some lines that you can see well, what I'm gonna do is choose a couple of these guys that I think will do the best and I'm going to forge weld them back to back on the largest surfaces so we're going to flatten a couple of these guys out and square them up just a little bit. And we'll clean up the backs of a couple of them. And we'll tack weld them together. So we can give ourselves a, a little piece that we can uh, at least walk away with on this one. We'll try to recover a little bit. There we go. Sorry about the out of focus. I didn't realize it was. But that'll go away here in just a second. All right, we cleaned up the backs of two of them, put them back to back, and we forged them down to you know, similar sizes. And you can see some areas in there where it looks like maybe the welds haven't quite taken, might be a few cold shuts in there, this, that, the other thing. But we're going to get this thing up to pretty good temperature and see if we can get this to all forge weld together nice and tight. See what this uh, comes out looking like. So we basically have uh, a couple of rollers that are back to back and then uh, in between those there are the uh, link plates and the pins in the middle. So there's uh, quite a bit of uh, different types of, and different combinations of metals in these two little lumps that we're going to forge well together. We'll see how this comes out. So we gave it to Scrappy, let him chew on it for a while and uh, he got that weld set pretty good for us pretty quickly and from that point forward we moved back and forth between Scrappy and Floyd and we let Floyd squeeze it out into a, a bar for us it's so much quicker and so much easier to do that and then uh, Scrappy just you know shapes it up real quick and easy and and gives you a nice finish on the thing so we did a little bit of back and forth between the two and the combination of those those machines is uh, just awesome and again, it's just like the miter saw. Um, I built both of these machines and I did those on a budget. There's videos on the channel of them and how I did that. And uh, the reason I do this, I like building machinery. I like the uh, process and the challenge to see if you can make something that actually works. And when it does, you know, it's rewarding. But it's also a budget thing. And it's you know showing the world out there that you don't have to go out and spend thousands on something that you can you know build yourself anyway so we're gonna let this guy cool off on the anvil here and I'm marking it out where I want to cut it later um, and I gave myself an extra I don't know, half three quarters of an inch past that line on either end and that's where I was figuring that the the good welds stopped and the bad welds started so that's what we're going with. All right. So I actually took a um, hard disk grinder to this and knocked some of the scale off and then got it onto some 36 grit. And we're going to take this all the way down to about a 400 grit. And it didn't really take too long. A little uh, grinder's working pretty good. We got some new belts. Thanks to all of you Patreon folks, which is awesome. Now, we had a little problem here. Listen closely and you'll hear it. That was the metal falling out of my hands, the billet that fell down through the ferric chloride went right through the bottom of the container. So there's a gallon of ferric chloride all over the shop floor that took me a couple of hours to clean up. And we got some new ferric chloride and we will do another little dip here and show you what that looks like. Alright guys, so learn from my mistake here. 
don't drop your billet down through your ferric chloride and bust a hole in the bottom of your tank. Good thing is, is I get to build a new tank. But, uh, all right. Let's have it done with this one, guys. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, pretty quick one, but we got it done. And uh, it didn't come out exactly the way I wanted to, but we were able to salvage some of it, and we have plenty of those little pieces left that we can use for other things. There you go. Crazy, crazy, huh? Anyway, um, and this is the bar that came out of it. Real quick look at, I don't know if you can see the pattern in there or not. Yeah, you can see some of that patterning. That's kind of cool, huh? And then this guy here on that side. Anyway, that's just a quick little etch. See what was in there. And uh, there we go. So we're going to call it good this time, guys. Thanks for dropping by Big Dog Forge. Really appreciate it. If uh, you like what you saw here and you're not a subscriber yet, you might want to think about hitting that subscribe button so you can see the new videos every time I do one. That'd be cool. Because subscribers are cool. I like them. They're awesome. And uh, hit the little like button if you would for me. That'd be awesome. And you can share these videos with all your friends. And if you want to show the channel a little bit of love and want to check us out on Patreon, you can do that as well. So thanks, guys. We're going to call it good this time. Take care. Be safe. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye now.